Good evening. Good evening. Oh, hey, I got response. <laughs> um, my name is Lenora Hurley. I'm the owner here at Next Chapter Bookshop, and I want to thank you very much for coming out in support of our guests tonight. I just have a few little things to mention before we begin. Uh, one, if you'd please silence your cell phones before we begin so uh, those don't go off in the middle of the talk. We'd greatly appreciate it. As you noticed, we have um, a camera crew here tonight. Uh, C-SPAN 2 from Book TV is here tonight to tape Charlie's talk. And so the question and answer will run a little bit differently. We're going to ask at the question and answer portion if you would please raise your hand and then wait until our sound guy with that long boom, what they call a boom microphone, comes over near you so that they can pick up the sound of your question for the taping. So if we can handle that. We're all good with that? Great. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, Charlie will speak for a bit and then take your questions, and we hopefully have a lively discussion. Afterwards, um, he will be at this table over here in the room to sign, um, personalize your books. And if you haven't purchased a copy already, it's available at the end of the program as well. Uh, tonight is a remarkable opportunity. Uh, it's a chance for you to see, hear, and meet an author. My staff and I work very, very hard to provide these opportunities for an ever -changing, in an ever-changing, ever-challenging environment. If you enjoy tonight's program, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd remember to mention Next Chapter Bookshop to somebody new. Sign up for our email newsletter. It takes the whole support of a full community to keep an independent bookstore going. And remember that you have a locally owned independent bookstore in your community that pays its taxes, <laughs> creates jobs, and believes firmly in the freedom to speak one's mind. And I think those are values we can all agree with. So please give a warm welcome for Charlie Sykes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm usually not this tall, just so you know. <laughs> You know, it's, it's always a lot of fun when you talk about uh, a book because unlike radio, radio, of course, is instant gratification. You say something, it goes out. With a book, you write it, and then you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and then a year or so after that, they publish it, and then people notice it. So I've had a chance to go around and uh, do a number of talk shows, and I uh, haven't done any bookstores yet, so I'm really pleased to be here. Um, I was at a political event last week, and I was talking with some legislators you know, about this, and you've all seen the, it is a nation of moochers, America's addiction to getting something for nothing, and I explained the thesis of the book, and one of the politicians afterwards said, you know, that really sounds interesting. Uh, can I get a free copy? <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he wasn't really getting it, or, 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 or maybe that if you're in government long enough, you're just so used to giving away other people's money that it just seemed natural, like I'm not, I don't have to pay for that, right? Um, you know, the, the, one of the f first questions that I get asked, or actually I, I like to be asked, is, okay, where, why, why moochers? Where did you come up with that? What a weird world, uh, what a weird word that would be. In fact, the publishers in New York um, gave me a little bit of pushback on that. They wanted something like, uh, I don't know, a, a nation of freeloaders or the dependency nation or the entitlement culture. And I, I really, I kind of dug in on this one, and I said, no, I, it's really got to be moocher, because it, it's such an old-fashioned word. It's, it, it, it needs to have a comeback now. Um, I, I had just finished rereading um, Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, and she talks about the moochers and, and the looters, and I thought that it kind of captured a lot of the things that were going on, but also it was appropriately pejorative. And uh, in, in, in the introduction, I say that it's, you know, it's time if you're at a cocktail party and you're talking to some corporate executive who's just bragging about how he just got back from Washington and, and you know, got some special break, some, some you know, I don't know, a low-interest taxpayer-funded loan or something like that, that if you were to respond to him by saying, so, you, you're a moocher. <laughs> now, you, 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 might, you might ruin the party, but you, you've at least helped clarify what's, what's, going, what's going on here. Um, I also try to define, and I'm not going to read you know, extensively from it, but um, one of the things I've tried to do, I, I really did set out to not make this a completely wonky book, that I tried to mix up a number of different interactive chapters of the book, including what I call the Moocher Checklist, which you can take home with you. I won't embarrass any of you by going through and you can see, am I a moocher? And, 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 and the reality is, is that a lot of us are moochers. That's kind of the point. You know, We're all born moochers. And it's the multiplication of, of mooching that's the theme of the book. But I, I do try to define what I mean by moocher. Um, a moocher is somebody who believes there's always a free lunch and that somebody else should pay for it. 
someone who expects others to pay to clean up their messes, uh, someone who lays claim to something to which they are not rightfully due, someone who shifts the cost of their own irresponsibility onto others who have behaved responsibly, who as a matter of choice take from or rely on the efforts and resources of others, somebody who takes unfair advantage of others to enrich themselves or otherwise bail themselves out, someone who is the recipient of the transfer of wealth created by others without just cause, or lives off the productive efforts of others and appropri appropriates the fruits of their enterprise without making a proportionate contribution, and someone who voluntarily seeks to be dependent on others. And, and of course, the whole question of the book is whether we've reached this tipping point, whether we've gotten to the point where more Americans are now or will get to the point where more Americans are looking to other people to bail them out for freebies, for entitlements, for transfer payments. We've reached this remarkable moment in, in American culture where we have, I think the Heritage Foundation last week said that 49.5% of Americans no longer pay any federal income tax. It doesn't include the payroll tax, but it's a federal income tax. Last year, for the first time, the federal government paid out more in the form of benefits, actually wrote out more checks in, in, for larger amounts. Than, they, than the federal government took in in income taxes. So that at the same time, fewer and fewer Americans are paying in, more and more Americans are dependent on, on government. So a lot of the book does deal with that question, what kind of a nation do you become if, in fact, we get to the point where, where what, 50, 60, 70 percent of the households in this country will receive more from the federal government than they, they pay in. Um, part of and, and, and you know, sometimes when I when I discuss this, people you know want to focus on on one aspect or another. One of the, the the points I hope that people take away from the book is that what's happened is that we have multiplied the forms of mooching across the board. Something happened during the great bailout when you had Wall Street companies, AIG, Goldman Sachs, General Motors. Uh, go to the federal government and say, we've been reckless, we've been greedy, we've been irresponsible, bail us out. Uh, do not you know, hold us responsible for our decisions. Because once that happens, then the rest of the country, I think, understandably says, okay, if you're getting a freebie, if you're getting a bailout, where's mine? Um, I have a little chapter called The Moocher's Dilemma. I want to just read two of the little mini chapters for you. And The Moocher's Dilemma is this, um, and it's based on, on reality. Consider the escalating temptations and the moral dilemmas in these scenarios. Number one, car keys are left in the ignition of a parked car and the motor's left running. Do you take advantage of the situation and drive off in the car? Why or why not? That one's easy. Number two, the clerk at the grocery store gives you too much money and change. Do you keep it? Do you point out the mistake? Why or why not? Number three, your bank statement includes a larger balance than you believe is warranted. You realize the banks made a mistake. They credited your account with too much money. Do you take the money, or do you call and say, hey, you made a mistake? And then number four, a government employee comes to your door with a check for disaster aid. You've done nothing to deserve the money. You've suffered no damage at all. He explains to you it's perfectly legal, and you are entitled to the cash. And if you object, say, I don't really need this money, um, he'll just point out that if you don't accept the check, your neighbor's just going to get a bigger check, your neighbor who also probably has suffered no, no damage. So what do you do? Do you accept the check? Do you think most people would accept the check? And what's your decision based on? Is it based on character, morality, or just common sense? And at a certain point in American culture, what happens, I think, is that the people who play by the rules, the people who work and you know, put money in 401ks, um, you know, try to get an education that they can afford with a degree that will actually get them a job, um, who buy a house that they intend to pay for, those people, what happens when they look around and go, okay, I'm, I'm the sucker. I'm the sucker because we, we are rewarding and encouraging the takers rather than the makers. What happens then not just to the economics and the politics of the country, but to the character of the country. All right, I just want to read one more thing, and then I will open up a, you know, for hopefully a lively conversation, although I hope you're not intimidated by the big boom that's coming. Uh, I piggy bank, which I suggest that people read when they do not have a problem with their high blood pressure. 
My 401k is down 30%. My employer just cut the match, and it looks like I may have to work until I'm 70 years old. I also pay for pensions for public employees who retire in their 50s. 